This is Dr. Matt Barber of Alabama Orthopedic Clinic. We are proud supporters of Ransom Reprogram, Ransom Ministries, and all of the good work that they do in our community. If you would like to learn more about us, check us out at alortho.com or barbertotaljoint.com. You can also hear more from me personally on the Ortho Real podcast. Thank you again for allowing us to be involved with Ransom Ministries and all of the great work that they do. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience. My name is Matt Armbruster, Executive Director of Ransom Ministries. You're going to hear stories from people that we've served and people that serve alongside us, as well as those that we partner with throughout our community. You're going to hear about decisions they made throughout their life and things that happened through different avenues of their life that caused them to go down a path that they didn't see themselves going. And then also those decisions that they have to make on a daily basis to stay away from those decisions that they made in the past. Ransom Ministries empowers people to utilize their God-given gifts and talents in their career and for their community. All along the way, we learn how to help those close to us and also maybe even help ourselves. This is real. This is raw. This is Ransom. This show is brought to you by Ransom Recycling, your number one choice for electronic recycling in Mobile, Alabama. Help reduce waste in our landfills by recycling all of your unwanted, unused, and non-working electronics. Ransom Recycling is a division of Ransom Ministries that is helping to put men and women back to work. Check out RansomMinistries.com for a complete list of acceptable items. Drop-offs and pickups can be easily scheduled through the website. Please note that we are not accepting TVs at this time. Ransom Recycling, open 8 to 3, Monday through Friday. Help our planet while helping men and women re-enter the workforce. With every start, we are born again. Open your heart, spend less time in your head. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience. You know, over the last few weeks, we've been going through our curriculum to kind of give you an idea of what our students go through and what we teach through these this 18-session uh, course. Today, we're going to cover 16, 17, and 18. These are, again, these sessions all are two-hour sessions. We do them every day, and our recycling students cover two every week, and they go over a 90-day period. So we have two different ways that we um, serve. So we also we bring in ladies from the Home of Grace, which is a women's rehab, um, and they go nine, it's a 90 day rehab. So in the last month, they bring them here to our facility and we walk them through our curriculum. We have teachers from all walks of life that come in. We're always looking for people that love to teach people that love to bring joy to people and bring encouragement. We're always looking for people to pick up some of these, these sessions. And it really isn't that hard. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it, but we run that with home of grace. We've been doing that for since 2015 run about 280 women through this program. We have about 83% success of them getting jobs and staying in them, which I think is good. Um, and then uh, we also have guys and, and women that go through our recycling program where it's a job training program for 90 days. We do two classes a week. They also then take what they learn in the class and put it into a real life practical application in a real life job situation that we call a theater of work. And what that is, is it's them practicing what they're going to do in a real job. Many of the people that we get have a lot of things they got to do. They have to restitution, they have to pay, they have to go report to their probation officers. And that's hard to do in a real job. So we help them get through that. Some of them need driver's licenses. Some of them need cars. Um, so we help them work through that in those 90 days and help them to achieve those goals so that then they can go into a real job and a career eventually we call it the abc's of work any job better job a career and so the recycling is not any job for them we then also take the women out of home of grace and we try to help them get jobs as well and um i'll cover a little bit of that at the end of what we've um kind of developed in order to do that first of all session 16 is becoming a leader the inspiration is matthew 20 28 
said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. We want to learn how to be a good leader. So on their path to sobriety, one of the most vital aspects of healing is service. So this section right here, I know it says becoming a leader, but we are firm believers that you need to serve other people to be a leader. Um, that's what we saw in Jesus. He, he set that example for us. He served his disciples. He served the people around him, but he was a leader and people wanted to follow him because he was a servant. So we talked to them about describing a time when they were in need. And many of the people we come across, you know, whether they be homeless or addicted or, or coming out of prison, they all were at a time of need and they needed someone there. And that's what this whole reprogram is about is we want to be there for them when they come out of those things so we can be that light for them so that they can um, move on. Because a, a big thing with any of those three things is, is rapid attachment. They need to be able to rapidly attach to a job and to people that are going to encourage them and move them on. So we talk about that. And then we talk about a time, hey, tell me a time when you volunteered and gave back to someone in need. And they all share that and we talk about it. And then we give them ideas of how they can get involved. Because I'm a firm believer that if you're going, if you're going through a rough patch or something's going on, and this is for everybody out there, if you can, if you're going through a tough time, whether it be a divorce, someone you've lost, you want to get out and serve. Just go find something. I remember one time I found out some really bad news and I just grabbed some water and I went out and handed it out on the street corner. You know, just get outside yourself because a lot of times when bad things are happening, we want to spend our time in a pity party and really just think about all that we deserve and why do why is this happening to me? And really, if you get out there and you serve other people, it's, it takes you out of yourself. And see, really, that's what addiction is, is. Addiction is covering up things and making yourself feel better so you don't have to deal with it. Criminal activity is the same way. But get out there and serve someone. Find a organization that does great things and get involved. I don't care if it's a um, animal shelter or a, a soup kitchen or a rehab or even with us in our cafes or or us in our ministry. We always like people coming on. So what they do is then they instead of sitting around waiting for a job, let's get out and find something we can do. You know, and surround ourselves by like-minded people, because when you're volunteering, you're going to be around people that like to volunteer and like to help people. So that would be a great way for you to get outside yourself and also network so that you can meet people because networking is a huge part of what we do here, too, is we try to put them in contact through, you know, last week we talked about the employer roundtable and the mock interviews. We put them around people that they can you know, glean off of, they can get information from, they can talk to, they can befriend that way. And in the long term, they have somebody that they can talk to. Um, so we talk different ways, working with the homeless, visiting a substance abuser in prison, uh, making coffee at your AA meeting, talking to the public about addiction, visiting schools, going to soup kitchens, helping with ransom cafe. And then we try to go on a service project with them. If that's not possible, um, then we tell them when they get out of rehab or they get out of this program. And what we do with our guys in recycling, you know, that when the when the hurricanes came last year, I took my guys, we loaded up some mowers and weed eaters, and we just went out in the town of Chickasaw and we just cleaned up people's yards. And that was probably the most rewarding thing that we did, even more so than learning how to work because it taught them to get outside their cells. So we asked them to do a service project on their own and then answer these questions. Um, describe what you did in your service project. How did you feel about it? How did you meet? Where did you plan to volunteer after you graduate? Where do you plan to go? And we try to get them to start thinking about service because I think if we could get employers, there's a lot of employers out there that that's part of their culture is to serve other people. And I think it's very important. There's companies out there that even pay their employees to go and um, serve somewhere, maybe be on Thanksgiving or wherever, whenever it is. We've had a lot of companies that support us through bringing their volunteers, whether it be Shell Oil or whether it be um, Toyota Finance, um, all those different places. They send their employees to help us. University of Mobile does a big serve day. And a lot of churches do that same thing. There's a purpose for that. And it's to get you outside yourself so you look at others, because I think that's how we're going to change the world. And that's how you get out there to hear other people's stories. Then in session 17, we talk about job readiness and leadership. And it's based on Colossians 3, 23 through 24. 
Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive your inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord. And we talk about that is that when you go to work, you don't have to impress anyone. You're working for God and you're there to glorify him. And that will set you apart. You know, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to it. If you go to a job because of money, then you're going to get tired of it and you're going to think that you deserve more. If you go to a job because you want to glorify God through your work, then you will end up getting promoted, raises, all those things will be added to it. I'm a firm believer in that. I've seen it through multiple people that have gone through a program and we see guys that have been so successful. We have some that started in our very first class back in 2000 and um, well, it's been six years ago, whatever the 15. And when we started that, they're still working the same job five or six years later. And that's a, that's a testament to them going there to glorify God. And they've all moved up in their, in their chosen fields. Um, you have to work with a positive attitude and you respect and believe your leadership. Do not overreact when someone does you wrong. It's going to be people that are going to push your buttons and try to make you react. And you got to really not overreact. You got to be kind and fair. You got to offer to help with projects that aren't even on your list. You know, everybody has a job, but everybody also is working together. Um, be re very respectful to the people around you. Do things above and beyond. I share a story that if you see trash in a parking lot, you need to pick it up. You know, don't wait for someone else to do it. I use a story about um, putting your buggy up when you're at Walmart. That's a character trait. You know, nine out of ten times I see people over there trying to put that thing up on a curb. They work harder to not put it into the little place where it goes than they do just to put it in the place that it goes. And all that does is it tells me that you're lazy, first of all, but it also tells me that you think you're better than the person that has to put those carts up. So, so we tell them, hey, put your cart up and do those things. Start out small, and that will build on that as a character. All right, so we talk a little bit in there about being in leadership. We talk about forgiveness at work. And we share a story. We talk about this manage, management experience and we get in groups and we see, see how we're going to solve that. We also talk about culture. It's very important for you when you go to a job to understand what the culture is and to ask those questions in the um, interview process. You know, what about breaks? When do we take them? You know, when do we get off? How about personal phone calls? Can I get personal phone calls? Can I have my cell phone? All those different questions and do I need to do it on breaks? socializing. Being social at work can be a good thing, but it can also be overdone. Make sure your company policy on socializing at work is well understood. Then communication. How do I communicate and use the authority of right under me instead of going you know, to a big supervisor or whatever? And then also, what do you expect me to wear? How am I supposed to have my appearance? That goes back to the question about tattoos and, and different dress. So we need to know what they're looking for. We also cover yearly evaluations. We cover what that is, what an evaluation is, and then we also cover customer service. We ask them questions like, think of a company that gives really good customer service. And almost every time they bring up Chick-fil-A because they give great customer service. And then we ask, think of a company that doesn't. And there's companies, I won't name them, but there's companies we all know that give terrible service and um, we don't go back there. And that's the same way it is with an employee if you're not giving good service and you're not fixing a problem for your employer, you are now a problem and you won't be there very long because an employer hires someone to fix a problem. They need a, sp they need a space field. You're there to fill it. And if you become a problem by, you know, causing dissension in the team, by belly aching about being there past a certain time, then you are a becoming a problem to your employer and you can't do that. A employer doesn't have time to do that. So we try to work through those issues through this, um, how to become an ideal employee. We also have them fill out a sample application because I don't know how many of you have taken applications at a job. And if they can't spell things, they can't fill things out. They, uh, do that. Then their, their application gets thrown away normally. And then we talk about again, evaluations and how we need to it's good to ask about evaluations so that you can look at them and see what they look for. You know, what that be work, work, uh, work ethic, teamwork, their attendance, 
um, any of their training and all the different things that go along with that. So that's session 17. Now we move into 18, which is graduation day. This is always the fun day. It's always fun to look at the look at the group, the class, and look at them from day one. They're kind of scared. They don't know really what they're getting into. They don't have a lot of confidence. They're very um, embarrassed sometimes of what they've done, what they've been through. And by graduation date, they're a totally different person. You can just see the confidence, the smiles, all those things. And so we go over in graduation day, and I ask them, how, how are you different than you were on the first day? And I have them answer those questions. And then I ask them, what's the main thing you learned in reprogram? And most of the time they tell you, hey, my past doesn't define me. Um, I do have something to offer. And then we do a worksheet where we get their address and contact information so that we can stay in contact and, and really kind of see where they are. Then they take a survey to kind of help us do a better job. And we ask them to rate us a one through five in different areas. And they're usually pretty honest about it. And that helps us change some things if we're not doing it up to excellence, because that's always what we're trying to do. So now they've graduated, right? So the reprogram girls that come from the Home of Grace, they graduate, and then they're, it's normally around their graduation date from the Home of Grace, so they'll be going back out into the real world trying to find work. Many times it's hard, but most of the time they can. We have a lot of great partners that hire the ladies um, out of the Home of Grace, Rouse is being one of them, which is a great organization, and they don't hold their past against them. We've had many of them go into there and work their way through into management and then move on to other careers. And uh, I think that's a great thing. Also, in the meantime, back in April, we started an, a part of our program called Ransom Staffing. And what that is is we take our graduates – and we place them in temporary jobs throughout Mobile and the surrounding community. And um, like, for an example, we work for Merchants Transport, which is a warehousing company. I send people over there. They put them to work because most of our guys have OSHA training and they also have forklift training when they leave here. Um, we're also trying to come up with more partners. We're growing it really small, I mean, really slow because we want to make sure that they're graduates and they have the same mentality that we do about work and and when they go these employers cannot say enough good about them because they are such hard workers they stay busy they're working for god they're not working for that employer and it's been a great thing over the last few months i can't wait to see what it does in the future I mean, if you're a business owner out there you know we'll have people for you to to come work for you in the future if you really want to do some temporary stuff and also, we have great people coming out of our program that need some full-time employment. I hope that you enjoyed this walkthrough Ransom Reprogram curriculum. It's a little different than we were doing in the past, but I just felt like it was something that needed to be done so you could see kind of our principles, how we look at jobs, how we look at training. And we believe soft skills are, are an excellent thing to teach and also character traits. And I do believe that this needs to be in not just for people that we serve, but all people out there, businesses could offer it to their employers, to their managers, so that then they could learn how to deal with people that they have to lead. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too boring. I hope that you'll follow us. If you want more information, go to ransomministries.com. Email me any questions you have to info at ransomministries.com. You can follow us on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram. Go on and uh, rate and review our podcast. Tell us how we're doing. Also, if you have anything that you would like to hear us talk about, go ahead and send me an email to that info at Ransom Ministries and let me know. Man, I appreciate you tuning in to what we talk about. And until next week, y'all have a great week and we'll see you next week. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight